Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about simple linear regression a little more and introduce the idea very, very important and supervised to machine learning, which is the idea of a cost function, error function, loss function. I'm using a bunch of different terms for what really just means a metric or something able to quantify numerically, so a value, one, two, three, about how bad your model is. So generally we stick with, we stick with a positive value. So we're not going to think about negative errors. We're going to talk about between zero and some really big value, whatever, a hundred thousand. It's not going to be that big. But the point is that the bigger this number is, the higher your error is. And the closer it is to zero, the more accurate or better your model is. Okay. So we're going to introduce the idea by talking about basically our points in our line here. Okay, so you can see we have our function, which is for any data point, we can input say, okay, for this, for this value of x, we would guess this value. Okay, well, we are clearly wrong in many places. For these data points, we have our x value of this, and then we say, okay, we predict that the y is going to be here. And instead, it was actually up here. And so what I just drew in is the distance between the line and the point. Okay, so we can talk about these distances numerically as y hat minus y, right? And if I was to talk about, say, the ith data point, I would say y i hat minus y i, okay? So that's really the difference between the line and the point. So right now, this could actually have a sign which is negative or positive. If y hat is the one above here, or it's the positive one, and this is the negative one, then basically this whole thing would be positive if y is lower. So y is actually lower than the line, and it would be negative if y was uh, bigger than or higher than the line. Except we don't really want to talk about a sign. We just want to make this positive, okay? We only really want a, a positive metric. It just makes it, it a lot easier for us. And so what we do is this is one of the big reasons we're going to square this thing. Okay, what that does, it doesn't just make it positive, it also makes it multiply by itself, which does have an effect, uh, which we might talk about later. But the main point of it is just to make this thing positive. Okay, so now no matter what, this thing is going to be positive, And we can quantify for every single data point, we can look at the line, the distance between the line of the point. This is some number, say this was five or whatever okay so we're talking about the units on the y-axis here whatever the distance is here that distance is this thing here and then we square that so that it's positive what we are also going to do is sum over and if you haven't seen this notation before it's just means sum so we sum over all of the differences between the point and the line so that means for this point we get that distance we square it for this point we get that distance and we square it. We do that for everything and we add them together. So that is our metric for error, except also what we're going to do is divide by n. So the same thing, multiply by one over n. It just means now we're basically thinking about this as an average. So what this thing is called is MSE or the mean squared error. Okay. The mean squared error. And I hope that term makes perfect sense because it's a mean. It's like an average. Remember, if we had, say, <clears throat> if we were just looking at the average of, say, 10 people's ages or five people, we'd have, say, age five plus four plus two plus seven plus 10 plus 10. We would divide all of those by the number we have. So the number we have one, two, three, four, five, divide that, and we get our average. So it's a mean squared error because we're getting the mean of the squared errors. The error is the distance here. Here's our error. And then we square it. There's that. And then we take the mean, mean squared error. It is one such loss function or error. There's a lot of different terms, which you'll hear cost function, loss function. Um, there's technical terms for each of them, what they really mean, but people are pretty loose with the terminology. We just mean some error. So now we have a way of quantifying. So this can produce some value given these points and a, a line. So whatever line we happen to draw, it could do it for this line or for this line or for the line that we already have. It gets some error. And that is a way of saying how good this line is. Because picture it, if you had a line that was instead, say, um, let's go with this line. Okay, 
clearly the yellow line, you're, you're, you know it's going to have a lower error. If we were to calculate the error for both of these two lines, the total error would be a lot less for the yellow line than it is for the green line. And thus, we'd probably, not necessarily, but probably prefer the yellow line. And we'll talk later about why I said probably. It's kind of a tricky issue. But in general, we prefer this, the lowest error. Okay, we want to find the line with the lowest error. What can we do to find our line? Well, to actually uh, change our line, we can change beta naught and beta 1. So it's our freedom as to, that's how, what controls this line. Remember, it's what gives this lift is beta naught and beta 1 is what gives it the slope. We want to find beta naught and beta 1 to get the smallest error, and that's what we're going to do in the next video. See you then.